Hello, welcome once again to the program, Remember Your Leaders. We thank God so much for this opportunity given unto us to learn about our leaders. Some have their names written in the Bible and some do not have their names written in the Bible. But history has it all. We give God all the glory. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we are so thankful unto you for today too. By your grace, O oh God, you have seen this day. And we pray that, Lord, you lead us through your word and even through what you have in store for us. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you, their lives and their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Yes, I have confidence, I have the confidence that the Lord is my helper. Man can do nothing to us. Hebrews chapter 13, the verses 6 to 8. And that is our anchor scripture for this program. Today we are going to talk about a mighty man of God. Jonathan Edwards. Jonathan Edwards. He was born in 1703 and he died in 1750. Eight, meaning that he was only 55 years old and he died after he had chicken he had smallpox he had taken the vaccine they, they inoculated him for um, small a uh, small pox vaccine and after that he died Jonathan Edwards came from a large family with a pastoral heritage and he was born in East Windsor, Connecticut. Edwards grew up in a family dedicated to the purposes of God in an early American context. Edwards was raised along with 10 sisters, each of whom was at least six feet, <laughs> six feet tall. So I should think that they, they were all tall. By loving parents, Timothy and Esther. So Jonathan's father was called Timothy and his mother's name was Esther. Timothy Edwards served as a pastor of Second Church Windsor. Edwards was raised, that is Jonathan, was raised in a setting that emphasized the reality of awakenings. In the earliest correspondence, we have from we have, that we have from Edwards a brief letter he wrote in 1716 at age 12 and thus man Edwards Jonathan Edwards entered college at the age of 13 so he was a brilliant young man and he describes recent events in the church of Timothy Edwards his father through the wonderful mercy and goodness of God, the heart in this place being a very remarkable stirring and pouring of out of the Spirit of God. So his father's church was a Holy Spirit filled church. While there was a time tension between Jonathan Edwards and his father, example over the preparationist view of conversion he did not understand to be converted why should one be converted the younger Edwards had a deep and abiding desire 
to love and honor his parents and that was demonstrated throughout his life and i believe this is what god wants from all of us as children of god we should respect the elderly whether the person is your mother father or not let us respect the elderly and as well as our parents we cannot respect another elderly person without respecting your parents and this is how his own conversion and work of sanctification came through with much struggle as a youth Edward struggled with the understanding of the sovereignty of God he once wrote from my childhood up my mind have been full of objections against the doctrine of God's sovereignty. He did not believe the doctrine of God's sovereignty. It used to appear like horrible doctrine to him. However, in 1721, he came to a delightful conviction as he was meditating on 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 17 he remarked as I read the words that came into my soul and was as it was diffused through it a sense of the glory of the divine being a new sense quite different from anything I ever experienced I thought with myself how excellent a being that was and how happy I should be if I might enjoy that God and be wrapped up to him in heaven and be as it were swallowed up in him forever I kept saying and as it was singing over these words of scripture to myself and I went to prayer to pray to God that I might enjoy him and prayed in a manner quite different from what I used to do with a new sort of affection so at last he the Lord himself the Lord revealed himself to him the Lord revealed himself to him after he has read 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 17 to the God of ages immortal invisible the only God be honor and glory forever and ever amen so the word of God touched his heart so that his previous understanding about the sovereignty of God and why someone has to be con con um, converted, the Holy Spirit took over through the word of God. That is in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. And that was when young Edwards, Jonathan Edwards, came to understand the preaching of his father and also all that was happening in his father's Holy Ghost filled church. Hallelujah. And he said, how I wish this God would take me up to glory and let me be in him forever. Absorb me in him forever. And this is what Jesus tells us. He is in his father. His father is in him and we are also in Jesus. And so when we come to accept him as our Lord and personal savior, he absorbs us. He makes us part of the family of God. In fact, we become joint heirs with the son and God has given us authority to become his children. When we accept him as our Lord and personal savior and we become God's 
adopted children. Children who can call him Abba Father. This is the God that Jonathan Edwards came to believe in. He pastored his first church when he was 18 years. As a recent graduate of Yale, Edwards ministered to a Presbyterian church in New York for eight months. It seems that Edwards enjoyed his time in this post, so he wrote where they stationed him. He loved the place. So he wrote, I came away from New York in the month of April 1723 and had the most bitter parting with Madame Smith and her son. My heart seemed to sink within me as at leaving the family and city where I had enjoyed so many sweet and pleasant days. I went from New York to Wethersfield by water, that is by sea. He, he, he went by ship. As I sailed away, I kept sight of the city as long as I could. So when he, he left the place, he mentioned, he mentioned Madam Smith's name. It means that that woman was someone dear to his heart, Madam Smith and her son. It means that they really hosted him. It was not in any way a long pastorate. It was not in any way a long pastorate. And we know that after this, he went into the academic realm at Yale, where he served as a tutor for two years. However, that one can see in words like this, that we can see that it made an impact in his life. And at a very young age, he thought highly of his wife. Even at a young age, Jonathan and Sarah met in 1723 in a New Haven, Connecticut, when Edwards was 20 years old. Everything he did was very fast, yes. Okay, so Edwards' God-centered theology shined through all that he did. In thinking of the girl who would become his wife in 1727, Edward remarked, I think he must be a poet or a writer. Everything he wrote down, everything he wrote down. He wrote about how wonderful this lady that he was going to marry is, how sweet and calm and how ben be uh, benevolent she was and um, how great he saw God in, in her, how he saw God's greatness in her. And she will sometimes go about from place to place singing sweetly. And this is something that Jonathan really liked about Sarah. His longest tenor in ministry was serving as assistant and then pastor of the church in Northampton. Northampton. Edward's maternal grandfather Solomon Stoddard long served as pastor in Northampton. On August 29, 1726, he went to work his he went to work his grandfather as an assistant pastor in the church of Northampton. He was ordained on February 16, 1727. On February 11, 1729, Stoddard died and Edwards became pastor of the church. He was a key player in the first great awakening as we, we talked about him the other time that along with the, with the John and Charles Wesley as well as George Whitefield 
Edward stands as one of the most recognized participants and defenders of the first great awakening. Once Edward took over the Stoddard in 1729, he pressed for repentance in Northampton. Edwards began to see fruit from his efforts in late 1733, when he reported that the younger people of Northampton were showing flexi flexibleness in responding to the um, exhortations about late night carousing. All of this served as a precursor to the outbreak of revival in New England, which Edwards documented in detail in his work, A Faithful Narrative. Yes, he is a writer. So the church where he served the longest fired him. Why? On June 22nd, 1750, Edwards was, Edwards was voted out of his pastorate in Northampton. Several reasons were and are cited for his dismissal. His request for an increase in salary. He and Sarah had 11 children. His response to bundling among the youth, his sermons on the bad books and public identifications of the innocent. Some young men had gained access to a midwife's manual that contained images of the female anatomy and used it to taunt young women in the town. And perhaps most important, his position to the halfway governance, co covenant at Stoddard's Doctrine of the Lord's Supper as a converting ordinance of the 230 men who voted, only 23 stood in his favor. On this fateful June day, Edwards preached his final sermon as the church's pastor. He preached intermitt intermittently over the context several months from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 14, which says, Just as you did partially understand us, that on the day of our Lord Jesus, you will boast of us as we will boast of you. And those who were professors of godliness amongst us, I would now call you to a serious consideration of that great day wherein you must meet him who has held to for being your pastor before the judge whose eyes are as a flame of fire. I have endeavored according to my best ability to search the word of God with regard to the distinguishing notes of true piety, those by which persons might best discover their state and most surely and clearly judge of themselves. He did so many things and I believe that if we are to continue, we will not finish. So we will pause here next week god willing will continue with jonathan edwards and see why all these things had to happen to him he worked hard for the lord but in the end he was expelled from the church going into details on why he was expelled from the church so that we can connect to our lives as well as Christians. May the Lord have mercy on us as leaders who are leading people to know Christ. There are two things. One may be standing very well just as Jesus stood when he came here on this earth, but so just as the apostles the apostles stood but still people hated them and the other side is also that we should be careful anyone who thinks is standing make sure you are standing well in the lord you may fall and the enemy will have his hold may the lord help us 
to stand for him alone. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you, their lives and their faith. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. He was someone, Jonathan Edwards was someone who followed after his grandfather and also became converted after he had he, he had read first Timothy 1 17. He had believed in the awesomeness of God. So God willing next week we'll talk about why he was expelled. God bless you all. And these two scriptures that we have, I pray that you have time to read them so that to speak to our hearts. We will all stand before the great judge. With the eyes of flame, he will judge us. And where will be your stand? We are being surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses and they are urging us on. They are urging us on that we also struggle hard as you are doing now. But with the strength of the Holy Spirit, you can make it. So do not stop on the way. If you are now starting, the strength comes from the Holy Spirit. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, He is the one going to see you through. Yes, He will surely see you through. God richly bless all of us. God willing, we'll meet again next week and continue with Jonathan Edwards. Have a fruitful weekend. Enjoy your day always in the Lord. God bless you. Bye-bye.